Okay. So by, ni- by 1980, you graduate from Harvard yes. with a physics degree. Physics. And you go to the University of Texas at Austin. Yes. Why leave the Ivy League system at that point? Well, so you go to where, who takes you. I apply to grad. I applied to Harvard. They didn't take me really for, for graduate school. Okay. Right. Actually, they there are two reasons why they might not take you. One of them, they just don't want you. Another one is it's actually better to go to a whole other institution where you have new faculty, yeah. new new research programs. So it's it's genetically healthier to diversify your exposure than to stay in one place for eight or 10 years, because that's what it would be, four years as an undergraduate, another five or six. Um, I was accepted at UT Austin. That they own their own observatory in West Texas, the McDonald Observatory, nothing to do with the burgers. Um, and uh, that's where I met my wife, who was getting her PhD in mathematical physics at, nice. at UT Austin. Right. Okay, so you get your uh, master's in astronomy. Yes. Uh, at Austin. Mm-hmm. And then by 88, you go to Columbia. Yeah, so I transferred graduate programs. Uh-huh. Uh, things weren't working out uh, with my advisor. Uh, things, th- that's the thing about graduate school relative to undergraduate. Undergraduate, there's a book and there's an exam and there's a syllabus and you do all of that and you get through. Graduate school, there's a whole other social dynamic that has to work in order for it to work at all. And and this is your uh, your committee, your advisor, and the like. And there was there were elements there where it was clear I wasn't fitting in. And so generally, if you don't fit in, you you do get the masters, but then you move on. You go you either leave the field as many people do when things don't work out. But I was deep in, and so I transferred graduate programs to Columbia University where I was warmly embraced and I finished my PhD there. 